I think, uh, you know, our ball movement, you know, being able to stay organized offensively, um, you know, generate the right, right types of shots. And I think that the challenge is, though, defensively, can we, you know, sustain our, our effort and our concentration, our communication a little bit longer? Had some really good stretch in the fourth quarter. I thought we did a terrific job the other night. Uh, by no means perfect, but we just had that cover mentality and made plays, uh, you know, made just enough plays to come away with the win. But um, I think uh, overall, you know, 41% in the, in the fourth, uh, it's, it's a huge, it's a huge thing for us, you know, our fourth quarter defense. Well, I think part of it is the, is the urgency in the communication. Um, but then, the, you know, the third layer is just the cover mentality, multiple effort, where it's, you know, not always going to be clean and perfect. There, there are going to be breakdowns that happens, but um, guys are just in, in sync and, and they're trying to cover for one another. Uh, I think that's important because it's easy to game plan for a play. But what happens after the play breaks down? You know, can you contain the ball? Um, yeah, that'd be perfect. But now what happens when that guy gets beat? Is there going to be a guy in the right coverage spot to protect him? And then the play after that. So it's just, can you outlast the offense and, and keep making making plays uh, when necessary? You talked about defensively, um, trying to take away three-point attempts and getting to the mid-range and the shoot attempts in the mid-range and the The shot profile kind of reflects what you want. They're not taking very many threes, they're taking a lot of them. Mm -hmm. Because of that, you kind of say trust the process, trust the defense a little bit over time. And yeah, I mean, I think it's that's part of it. Um, you know, it's not just you know limiting the threes, but also the efficiency as far as which teams shoot them. Um, we've done a decent job of limiting the corners, um, forcing teams into the mid range. Sounds ideal. Obviously, you know, we all know Chris Paul th thrives in that area. So uh, I've seen uh, I've seen him beat you know teams in the playoffs that that way. So uh, I think it's overall. A good strategy, um, you know, not something you can necessarily go into every night and say, hey, we're going to live with that. But in general, you know, the aggregate of 82 games, absolutely. I think it's important to kind of dictate the shots we want. Um, you know, we have to do a better job of, you know, our rim presence. And some of that's not, it's not just blocking shots, but our positional defense, you know, using the rule of vert, um, you know, taking charges. You know, I think all those things can help, but get that number down, that efficiency number down for, uh, you know, those pain points. What's uh, the responsibility for a big man who's trying to defend Chris Paul? Obviously, that's not their first guy that they're guarding, but he seems to do a great job of baiting the big man. Yeah. I mean, he's he's a surgeon when it comes to pick and rolls. And he's seen every coverage, you know. You know, if you try to blitz him, if you try to trap him, uh, you know, switching defense, if you're down the floor, you know, he's seen it all. So I think it's just one of those areas where you know it's a volume – component of their game, um, can you give them different looks? You know, you steal a possession here and there. You, if you give him a steady diet of anything, he'll carve you up. Uh, you know, the, he's very efficient in that area, and he's, he's going to make the right play more often than not. I think the challenge for the bigs is, uh, you know, the com communication component, um, communicating early, dictating, you know, where we want, want to send him if we can. Um, you know, the smalls, getting into the ball, uh, not hitting and dying on screens, and just that element of pursuit. Um, I think it's important. So, so I think it's a it, two or three things that you know go into that. It's not always on the big, but bottom line is we have to throw different looks at him so he just doesn't live in an area of comfort. How does Brent feel about him offensively, and what kind of stands out about them using how they play and why it's a gap for them? Well, I mean that's why they're the best team in the league right now. I mean they've got a lot of weapons. You know they can play inside out. The pick and roll is a huge piece of that. Uh, but the volume of, of shooting, uh, they do, do a great job of spacing the floor correctly. Uh, you know, good to great mentality. They get off of it at the right time. They move and share the ball. Uh, they're not a lot of holes in, the, in, in their offense or defense. And they've got positional size. And I think there's a mental piece. You know, I think um, they do a great job of preparing, you know, their group. And guys are locked in the game plan. They don't, you don't seem to see a lot of coverage mistakes. He looked great. He was a full participant today. Um, so I think they'll just reevaluate him at, this afternoon and see how he responds. But it was great to see him out there. How, how is Brad progressing? Um, you know, it, it, there's a re reduction in the swelling. Um, I think he's feeling somewhat better. But 
Um, we still take a, a week to continue to rehab and reevaluate him next week. Just to clarify, tacked on to the game being on Monday game or what is today? Yes. Yeah, same time. Yeah, same time. I, I don't even know what today is. Today is uh, Friday. Yes. All right. Now the better question. What's the next month? Is it? <laughs> oh, February. I got that. I got it. Oh, for sure. I mean, I you know, talked about it, and it's one of those things that you don't really know it until you threw it out there and it happened, and, and those guys did a terrific job with it. But positional size and you know, the versatility gives you the, to switch and keep guys in front. They've all shown at times been able to, you know, stay in front of quick guards to, to guard pick and rolls. And, um, you know, I think, you know, whether it's late game, you know, or a chunk of the second half is a good opportunity to throw it out there. You know, it's a different look and different feel for what we normally do, but I think there's merit to it. When you uh, dig your outline up like this, and you get to know the pitch in this process, do sometimes you start with the three of you say, okay, well, I, I like that combination. I'm going to go about that. Or is it uh, you think of it in terms of five players? Well, no, it's more of the five. You know, and I think part of it too is the, the, rhythm, the rhythm component. Um, a lot of guys, you know, it's, it's a rhythm game. They, they want to kind of feel that they're going to play the same stretch the same time, you know, every night. And it's not always going to work out that way. Fouls or matchups, uh, things we like and don't like. But most guys like to know or have a general sense that they're going to you know, come in the game at a certain point. So you, you have to be mindful of that and not adjust things, you know, too dramatically. But some nights it's, it's just more of a matchup that, you know, if they're going to have this guy out there, then we're going to want to try and stay matched up accordingly as much as possible. Um, but in general, I think there, there are certain kind of routines that guys like, and it makes sense um, to keeping those guys to that as much as we can. No, it wasn't matchup based. I think it was just more the flow. Um, you know, we, we, we got started a little slow offensively, but you know, I, I liked where he was and he, how he was playing at that time. Um, that's the other piece is, is the game dictates. You, you like a, a certain lineup, a, a certain matchup, you just keep going with it. I'm sure you've watched plenty of film wow. early um, just to get a sense of the game. But since you played at Army Games, is there anything you've noticed that you've seen against you and, you know, maybe you've added to his game? That's really awesome. No, you know what, the, his ability to play off the bounce a little bit. You know, I think he's he's more comfortable in the post. We, he, we've talked about him shooting a three, but, uh, you know, being able to play, make, attack off the dribble, I think is another element that uh, I hadn't seen a ton of, but it's it's good to see. All right, Coach, let's head over to Zoom for some questions. We'll start with Kareem. Wes, just a quick one. Um, I couldn't really hear the question. I think you were talking about, gave an update on Thomas. Did you say went through practice pretty much day to day, reevaluate tomorrow? He did go through practice. He's a full participant, and uh, we'll wait to see how he uh, shakes out this afternoon. Um, but uh, hopefully, you know, he'll, he'll be available. Okay, cool. Sorry, I just couldn't hear that well. Thank you. Uh, Neil? Hey, Coach, I'm kind of just curious how much five-on-five five that you guys do kind of this part of the season um, and maybe, you know, how much scrimmage time that you guys got in today. Uh, it, it kind of depends, you know, the, the compression of games. But, uh, you know, these type of windows, we had two days in between. We were able to do some, you know, live stuff today, which is great. Um, but in general, you're not doing a ton of it, you know, and even if it is kind of live, it's usually half court or – but so it all kind of depends on, you know, the game schedule and, and how much guys have played, um, kind of determine how much we do. You have to kind of steal these moments when you can because that's where you can build on some of the slippage areas and clean up some things in a live setting. You know, it's, it's one thing to drill it, but to, to feel it full court or feel it, you know, five on five, I think is important. Thanks, Coach. All right, Coach. Oh, wait, last uh, second question here from Wayne. When you're muted. Hey, I was, I'm sorry, I had to mute. Hey, coach, was curious, when you look back at that film from the Sixers game, in particular the fourth quarter, what were some of the things that stood out to you that you were proud of? Just our effort. You know, I thought we, you know, really 
keyed in on guys. Um, you know, I thought we were uh, very active. Um, we talked about it this morning. We showed a little film. The uh, you know just the shrink mentality, the urgency to get to guys, the, uh, the urgency to, to help. Um, I thought we were pretty locked into trying to get the ball out of uh, Joel's hands and make life difficult. Um, and the ball bounced our way at times, but that's part of it. You know, I think you know a lot of times if you do things that are with aggression or you, you fly around, good things happen. And lastly, coach, one game at a time. You know, you have a, a five game homestand. What are some of the things when you try to establish a rhythm that you can you can do when you have such a long homestand as you have coming up? Well, I think part of it is the you know building on the other night. That that'd be great. Um, obviously, we have some tough opponents coming in, so um, it's easy to say, hey, we're, we're going to just run it back and do the exact same thing. You know, this, this is a different beast. Um, this team is the best in the league for a reason. Um, but can we find you know a way to at least compete? you know, at a certain level, um, like we saw in the second half of uh, the other night in Philly. Thank you, Coach. And last question to Christos. Hey, Coach. How are you today? Uh, coach, that game against the Sixers, the bounce back uh, against the Sixers, how, what it means? How big, how big was that for you? Well, I hope it's a momentum changer. Uh, I thought we played Milwaukee uh, relatively well until the last four and a half minutes. Um, you know, offensively, we had some lulls, um, but we were able to climb back into that game after being down 17. So on the second night of a back-to-back -back against another quality opponent, um, you know, we gave ourselves a chance. It came down to, you know, the last two possessions, but, you know, that, that's a great sign to see that we, we were able to bounce back mentally. Uh, physically, we, we responded, um, carried the game plan into, into the game and able to execute it. And also speaking about Kyle Kuzma's season so far, what did you see about his progress into a leadership role in the team? How and the level of maturity that you, that he plays on both ends of the floor? Well, he's a guy we've talked about. I mean, he's he's won a championship. He's played in big moments, so I think he's very comfortable, um, you know, in in his role and understanding. Um, he's obviously made made big plays for us on both sides of the ball, but the leadership component is you know part of his you know maturation as well. Um, you know, he's kind of pulling Rui, Denny, and those young guys, kind of helping, you know, them mature and bringing them along. I think that's a big part of it. You know, take a guy under your wing, and show him the ropes, and, you know, give him some insight, but, you know, breathe life and confidence into them um, is important. You know, I think it helps lighten the mood as well, and those guys kind of respond to him. So I think it's great. Well, what was that game the other night like for you? You know, had um, I mean, it was good. But just really just be back out on the floor, you know, being able to come out and just play with the team and stuff. It was it felt real good. But um, the main thing was just being locked in and paying attention to details on the things that he wanted, and just pretty much in general how he plays and stuff. You know, he um, is real aggressive, shoots over the top of you, he backs you down, he bangs in the post, he does a little bit of everything. So really just locking in and try to make sure I stay out of foul trouble early. And just, like I said, pay attention to detail and really just come out and just not back down, really. Because, you know, he's going whenever he touches the rock and, you know, he gets downhill, he's going to get whatever he wants in the paint. It's just up to me to really just try to try my best to stop that. <laughs> um, what stands out to you about the Phoenix Suns? Phoenix Suns, I mean, the win streak that they're on right now. You know, they're coming in with a hot hand. They got a lot of momentum. You know, I've been seeing, you know, the things that they do. They do a lot of great things on the floor. So really just coming in and just paying attention to detail, like I've always said, with a team like this, you know, you got Chris Paul, you got Devin Booker, you know, you got guys like that out there on the floor that are really facilitating and scoring and doing everything that they can to help their team win. So really just coming in and just locking in to the personnel for sure, because they're not going to come in and just back down. They're going to come in and try to punch us in the face first. It's a being a center, what's it like uh, playing in a defense against Chris Paul? I know that you know, you're basically, I'm sure everyone's got to pay attention. I mean, he's really crafty. You know, you never know what you're going to get with him, especially if he's coming off of a pick and roll. You know, you can get an easy pocket pass. You can get his signature mid range, or, you know, he's attacking the basket and dishing it out for a three. So, main thing is, is we just have to make sure we stop the momentum getting downhill off of a screen. Just make sure we stop the ball. But, um, and also make sure, you know, 
um, Aiden send the screen and stuff. You know, we can't let him get behind us on the road because Chris Paul, like I said, he's a facilitator. He's going to find open guys. If he doesn't hit Aiden, somebody's going to help in. He's going to hit the corner. Plain and simple. You know, just like I said, really locking into the facilitating part of him, you know, make him beat us on his jump shots. That's pretty much it. Um, speaking of the mid range, it seems like it's kind of by design for you guys to take away the three and try to get players into the mid range to mm. contest those shots. Um, how do you guys make sure that that's effective? Because it seems like your opponents, most of the shots they're taking are in the mid range, but obviously the defense overall. Mm -hmm. uh, I'd say, yeah, it's really important. You know, because the three can be a real dangerous part of the game, especially when guys are hot. So really just making sure we get guys off the three-point line and bringing them inside the three and making them making plays on the inside out, that's the thing that we want because we can scramble, we can play the defense that we want, and we can put the guys in a position to where we can either turn the ball over or have them force a bad shot. Yeah, um, how have you felt with the uncertainty of recently, you know, starting all season and then not playing? Uh, it's a bit back and forth. You know, it's a lot of frustration. I'm not going to lie. But at the end of the day, you know, I want to do whatever it takes to help the team succeed. So, I mean, if you guys have seen me on the sideline frustrated from time to time, that's on me. You know, I apologize. And pretty sure it's an embarrassment for the organization and the players, too. So, I on, on my end, I'm for sure working on not being frustrated and just, you know, coming out and enjoying the game, whether I'm on the floor or not. But the uncertainty, I mean, I really don't dwell on that because, you know, my time is going to come again. Whenever my number is called, I'm going to be ready for sure. So whoever's out there on the floor, I always, you know, motivate guys. And I'm always behind whoever's out there on the floor before me. That's my, that's the main thing. And I'm still learning, you know. My main thing, like I said, is not to really, I would say, be frustrated because, I mean, you know, sometimes changes have to be made. Oh, yeah, for sure. The whole team, you know, you know, from um, Coach West to the last guy on the bench, um, they always are in my ear letting me know. I mean, it's not going to last forever. You know, we're still trying to figure stuff out, which I understand. You know, I'm just on the bench over there trying to give as much support as I possibly can for the team, give them the energy that they need off the bench to win, for sure. So when you do come out the game like this, it's not starting, you know, you try and tell yourself not to overdo it, you know, just to make up for it. Oh, yeah, for sure. Just come out and play the same way I was playing before, you know, um, we made this change. You know, it, it sucked that um, TB had to go out on injury with his ankle. You know, it was real tough to see him go down. But um, coming out and just being uh, being able to pick up where he left off was the big, like the biggest thing for me. You know, coming out and playing the same way that I was playing before um, I had got up on the bench. And that's just the main thing in general. All right, Gaff, let's switch over to Zoom. We'll start with a question from Neil. Hey, Gaff, I'm curious when you're on the bench um, and potentially you know, not playing in certain minutes, how much conversation do you have with TB or Trez to you know, just kind of bounce ideas off each other live during the game? Um, it's from time to time. You know, I really just let guys kind of you know, cool down when they come off from the floor, for sure, because I know it sometimes can be frustration coming off the floor. I've done it. And I know guys nine times out of 10 are either frustrated with the refs or frustrated with shots not falling, frustrated in general. So I let guys cool off most of the time. And if you know, there's something that, uh, if I have to put my two cents on it, um, in on anything, I go up and I try to give them as best advice as I can. But at the end of the day, you know, it's guys that they have a couple of more years under their belt than me. So I'm pretty much just going over, really just trying to learn from them more than them learning from me, if that makes sense. And I know we've asked you to before about, you know, trying to avoid foul trouble, trying to avoid those ticky tack calls. Has there been anything, I think in Philly, you got, you know, called for a couple that you're a little upset about. Mm -hmm. Has there been any recurring thing that you're trying to be like, okay, this is definitely something that, you know, I get caught with too often, whether that you've picked up on or the coaching staff or anybody? Oh yeah, for sure. You know, I'm, I dial in most of the time, especially when I'm on the sideline or after the game, for sure, to just figure out ways and figure out, you know, the positions that I'm in on ways to prevent those fouls, for sure. So I'm still learning as a day, in, uh, day in and day out to really just figure out how to stay on the floor with at least, you know, the least two fouls instead of coming out, coming off the floor with like four fouls before, you know, a uh, quarter ends and certain things like that. So really just, like I said, like I say all the time, is just paying attention to detail to myself also, how I move my feet, the position that I'm in, what I give up to guys and what I can take away from the opponent as well. So the main thing is, is just learning from myself in that general area. Thanks, Gaff.
Mm-hmm. Over to Christos. Hey, Gaff, how are you today? I'm good. How are you? I'm fine. Thank you very much. Gaff, what did you learn in the last uh, five game, uh, six game stretch for your team? Um, No matter how many people that we are down or no matter how many people that uh, on the bench that were usually playing at first and that are not, I mean, we still have, you know, the depth and the talent. And I mean, just the grit really just to go come out and fight, you know, it's times where I've seen where we came out at the beginning and we fought and we came out at the beginning and we didn't fight. And then we brought it back up before, you know, the second quarter even started little things like that. And I always just pay attention to how, you know, the effort is on the floor for sure. Cause I mean, if you don't give it, if you don't give effort in this league, you're going to get killed at the end of the day. And obviously the game against the Sixers, the win against the Sixers was a great uh, confidence booster for you guys after a five game, uh, five lo- game losing streak. And what could you like to build on uh, on that victory and that effort overall? Just really building on the fight, you know, not backing down. And no matter, you know, no matter how good a team is and no matter, you know, what the team is, what a opponent is going through either, you know, we just have to come out and we just have to play. We just can't come out and just lay down for anybody. We can't come out and back down from the challenge. We have to come out night in, night out, 110% on the floor, 110% effort. If shots aren't falling, it's okay. We go for the next play. We don't get a block. If we get a foul, it's okay. Don't get frustrated about it. Just keep playing basketball. At the end of the day, it's all about the outcome at the end of the game. Thank you very much, Gav. All right. And the last couple of questions to Chris. Hey Gav, uh, you you played football in, uh, in in high school before you before you uh, went to college, and with the Super Bowl next week, I, I just have a couple questions. Okay. Uh, leading up to that. Okay. <laughs> um, Joe Burrow uh, said he could play in the NBA. He thinks he you, you know if he if he you know wanted to make a career change, he could you know get to that point as as a three and D wing. Um, what do you think that ramp up period would be like for someone who has played in uh, or in football shape to get to basketball shape? I don't know. I think it would be it would be different, especially because it's like I, I don't know if football condition and basketball condition is you know different. I really don't. I would say pay attention to it as well. It's been a long time since I played football. <laughs> I played football my ninth grade year of high school and stopped afterward because I couldn't catch it. I couldn't catch a cold. You know, <laughs> they had me out there on a wide receiver, the tallest guy out there, and I had the worst hands on the field. But um, in general, I, I would say the conditioning part. My transition from football to basketball, it was tough because I was coming in from, from the football season to in, right into our conditioning period. So it was rough for me. But, I mean, there's a lot of guys out here that are really built different. I mean, if he says he can do it, hey, you know, all props to him. <laughs> gotcha. And then do you have any rooting interest in the game next week? Say again? Uh, do, do you have any rooting interest in the game next week? Are you, uh, you know, for the Rams, for the Bengals, or just want to see good, a good game? I'm for the Bengals. Um, just because of the simple fact, I got a friend that's, like, a, been a fan ever since he was, a, you know, yay high to a horsefly. <laughs> and, you know, every time I get on a game with him or have a conversation with him, he always talks about the Bengals and how long he's been waiting for this moment. So I'm really happy for him. So I'm going to go for the Bengals. I, but I'm a bit 50-50 because I want to see Odell get a ring also. <laughs> <laughs>